what they don't tell you about wholesaling houses. Hi, I'm Phil Pustiowski with Freedom Mentor. I'm a real estate investor, mentor, coach, educator. I have, um, I have now become a best-selling author. You can learn more about us at freedommentor.com. Check out my book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. And in this video, I am gonna share with you the dirty little secret no one ever talks about when they talk about the subject of wholesaling real estate or wholesaling houses. What do I mean by wholesaling? Well, it's a little bit different than flipping, and let me give you the difference. Uh, if you've ever heard of the phrase flipping houses, uh, that term was referring to the idea of getting a property and reselling it for more money. And then it got a negative connotation over the years because there were a few bad apples that were scamming people. So flipping became a negative term. And then, um, several years ago, um, some television networks came out with sh television shows about buying, fixing up, and reselling houses, and the word flip or flipping was in the actual title of the television show. So all of a sudden, it kind of gave, you know, had a new level of credibility, and also it, it denoted when you were buying a house, fixing it up, and then reselling it. Okay, does that make sense? So flipping, in today's terms, is when you are, this is when you buy, then you fix up, then you sell. Okay? Now, how's that different from wholesaling? Well, wholesaling, you are literally getting the property under contract or, or even maybe even buying it, but then you're just immediately selling it or, or wholesaling it to, to another buyer. Okay? So that's what wholesaling is. Now, there's a dirty little secret, a big problem that comes up when you're wholesaling houses that no one ever talks about. Here's the thing. This subject is a, a hot topic with beginners, those that are first getting started, because typically it doesn't require any money or very little money, and it appears to have little or no risk. So people feel like, okay, if I'm first getting started, I need to do some flips, some wholesales to build up some money, and then I'll go do some other types of deals. Have you ever thought about that concept before? A lot of people do. Okay, well, that's wholesaling, uh, and that's flipping, and I'm about to uh, share something with you that could really blow your mind here, so hang on. Now, how come I'm sharing this with you, and maybe you've never heard this before? Well, I would uh, share with you one important point about all of my videos, all of my trains. First of all, I was trained by a mentor that never even went to college, he, uh, his first real estate deal he did when he was 17 years old, made over $150,000 flipping some land to Exxon. And this guy had all of his knowledge built on the streets in the real world. So that's what he shared with me. It was all real world street experience. He, he didn't go to classes, he didn't get any trainings, nothing like that. And then, um, you know, in my own investing career and then now teaching others, it's just what we've learned out there in the real world on the streets, you know, getting, getting bruised, getting, getting beaten up by certain deals, and that's where these lessons come from. So these aren't regurgitated from some other book, from some other training. And what I'm sharing with you here on this, this video, I doubt you've ever heard anywhere else. Uh, and it's especially applicable to beginners. You need to know this. Okay, so here's how it starts. Where does a wholesaling deal come from? Well, it comes from a person that needs to sell their house, but not just anybody. It comes from a motivated seller. And if you've watched my videos before, you will know that the motivated seller part is absolutely critical. You need somebody who absolutely just wants to give their property away, basically, either for a really good price or good terms. And there's very few of those out there. The majority of people who need to sell their property are going to work with a real estate agent. They have some time on their hands. They're going to be patient and all that good stuff. But then there's a tiny fraction, which our studies show is a little less than 5% of all sellers in any one area might fit into the motivated seller category. Now, they get motivated for all sorts of personal reasons, but they're usually in some sort of a bind. Maybe it was divorce, maybe it was illness, maybe it's just an inheritance and they needed money for a long time in the past and now they have this asset and they're going to sell it. You know, and all other sorts of reasons. They have to move because of a job transfer. Either way, they're in a bind. And that means that number one, they're going to be emotional. And what this ultimately means is they may be slightly irrational. 
This is important. This is why residential real estate, specifically, you can often find great deals because you find emotionally motivated sellers who are irrational and they will sell their property for a cheap price. Let me give you an example of irrationality. Let's say the person has the property listed for 150, they have it listed for say six months, they don't find a buyer, they may sell it to you for 100 because they're irrational, they're emotional, they're motivated. When all they could have done was drop the price by say 5,000 each week until they found a buyer. That would be rational. Irrational is they can't find somebody at 150, the heck with it, I'll sell it for 100 to this guy. But that helps you, right? Because that allows you to get great deals. But that's a double-edged sword. Because they're irrational, there's another side to this. Now by the way, if you have some sort of problem with the ethics of working with these types of irrational emotional people, I would love for you to join uh, the debate. I have another video called Is Wholesaling Ethical? Check it out. You'll be surprised by what you find out there. Okay, so you can go there for the ethics of that, but for the practicality of this, on one side it's a good thing because you can get a great deal. On the other side, it can be a bad thing because watch. Put yourself in their shoes for a moment. Let's say that they've owned the home for five years, seven years. Let's say they bought a new AC during that time, had to put on a new roof, new dishwasher. Uh, maybe they had all sorts of little handyman fix-ups. They've been paying the taxes on it every year, insurance on it every year. I mean, they've been paying their dues on this house. And so you're going to come along as the wholesaler, and you're going to get it under contract for, let's say, you get it under contract for 50000 and then you're going to turn around and wholesale it to somebody else for fifty-seven, And right there, you're going to make $7,000. Well, sometimes sellers, if they find out you're making $7,000, they flip out. No pun intended. They go berserk. Because to them, you haven't done anything. You just came along one day, put it under contract for fifty thousand. Now you're selling it for fifty-seven. You're gonna make seven thousand dollars, and you didn't even do anything, is what they think. That is the dirty little secret that nobody talks about when it comes to the subject of wholesale analysis. And it's for real, and it happens a lot. Now let's break down the uh, a couple key features. The first is. They're wrong if they think you've done nothing. Brokering a deal in real estate is the most valuable part of the deal. If you don't believe me, just go look at a closing statement. The real estate agents who found the buyer and seller and brought them together, they're getting 6% of the deal. That's a lot of money. And the mortgage broker, the closing attorney, sometimes even the contractor who fixed up the house, nobody makes as much profit as the person who brokered the deal. But that's in all business. You'll make more money brokering big deals than you will being the manufacturer and being any other part of the deal. Brokering, being buyers and sellers together, is by far the most valuable skill. It's an extraordinarily valuable skill, and you get, you get uh, compensated more for that skill than anything else in real estate. So you didn't do nothing. You did something incredibly valuable. You found a buyer at 57, and this person was happy with 50. See, if they were rational, they would be happy with 50, but they're not rational. Most people are not rational, <laughs> um, even the ones that aren't motivated. They see what you're making and all of a sudden they're mad and they're upset. Now how do they see what you're making? We're about to get into that. But that is where the crux of the problem is. When you wholesale a property, oftentimes you are literally giving your paperwork, your contract, you are assigning it to another uh, investor buyer. And when you do that, it's possible that the seller could see that you made 7,000. And that's when they go crazy. Let me give you a personal story. If you've watched another video, I've shared this once before. But what happened was this. I got the property under contract, and it's actually the numbers were this. Um, I got the property under contract for 21,000. It was an absolute dump. It was basically just lot price. 
it was basically lot price because I was just going to flip it to somebody who was going to bulldoze it and build a new home. Well, I, uh, I got a buyer in place at 28. So I was going to make uh, $7,000. The day before closing, um, the final closing statement came out and the closing attorney had emailed it to both me and the seller and as well as the new buyer. And that's when the guy found out that I was making $7,000 by flipping. Now I had told him that I may do that. I said, look, I may buy this myself or I may actually just uh, I may just actually uh, assign it over to uh, somebody else who's going to buy it. And he's like, at the time, he was like, oh yeah, that's fine. $21,000 is more than enough, Phil. You're great to work with. But This was years ago, by the way. This is a long time ago. And uh, anyways, the day before closing, he sees that I'm making $7,000. He makes a phone call and leaves it on my voicemail and it says something along the lines of this. You son of a beep. You're going to make $7,000 for doing absolutely nothing? I'll be damned, Phil. This contract is off. This deal is over. And if I find out where you live, Phil, and you listen carefully, if I find out where you live, I'm taking my shotgun. I'm going to blow your head off. That's exactly what it said. Whoa! What they don't tell you about wholesaling houses. Yikes. Now, he never found out where I lived. Um, but what ended up happening was this guy was literally willing to go to jail over this amount of money when before he was happy as a clam. So what can you do to avoid that? What can you do to avoid that sort of circumstance? Well, the first thing you can do is actually something I did with him, which is lay a foundation. So you got to lay a foundation. And that foundation needs to be an understanding that you're going to make money. You need to tell the seller, hey, look, I'm getting this under contract. Are you okay if I make a profit from this? And every seller says yes. Oh, yeah, I understand. So you're not going to freak out on me if you find out I'm making money. Why would I do that? Okay, just, just, just want to make sure. You lay the foundation because it came out of their mouth. And psychologists tell us that people will, will stick to their commitments that came out of their mouth. So hopefully that helps you. But number two, when you get closer to closing, you have to make a judgment call. What I mean by that is you've got to assess, is this person cool? Are they nice? Are they going to be reasonable? And you would have known this because you've gotten this far into the deal. You've been interacting with them a few times. And if you think, and I use this phrase a lot, if you think they're a nutball, then this is what you need to do. You need to do two closings. So in other words, closing number one, you buy the house for, say, 50000 And then closing number two, which could be the same day, you resell it to the person for, say, 57. Now, when you do two closings, you create two sets of closing costs, which can cut into your 7000 But a, um, you know, it's better, better than nothing, right? Making a little bit of money. The bigger problem is you may have transactional funding, which you've seen on my other videos. I talk about that. Transactional funding may kick in as well, and that may cost you some money. If the new buyer's paying all cash, some closing companies won't require transactional funding. That's a whole long story as to why they'll allow that, but it's basically because you don't have to go through the standard HUD procedures if it's all cash, because there's no loan involved, and so they don't need to stick to the same RESPA laws. And RESPA laws is the ones that prevent from being able to do two closings and using the new money for the old closing. And that's why transactional funding is even required, because of RESPA. But if it's all cash, RESPA is not even in the picture. And most closing companies don't even know what I just told you, but that's the, that's the law on that. Okay, so um, two closings will ensure that the person has no idea what you made. They will have no clue, because you will have bought it for 50. That's what they think. They didn't know that you sold it for 57 a few hours later. That's one option, uh, but obviously you'll, you'll, you'll make less money. Um, obviously, you can just roll the dice and hope they don't freak out on you. And then you can even prepare them say, hey, look, we're getting ready to, uh, to do the closing. There's a couple of different ways I can do it. Um, one way you would find out that I'm making a profit. Are you going to be okay with that? And they may say, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, cool. All right, we're going to do it that way because it saves me a couple of bucks in closing costs. All right, great. So you can definitely just roll the dice and then, then show that money on the actual closing statement. Um, but there's one more facet. If the buyer is getting a loan, okay, so if the new buyer is getting a loan, if that's the case, that's where things get real sticky. 
because you definitely have trouble assigning the contract because the contract needs to show the old seller and then the new buyer on there and that's the only way the underwriter is going to approve the loan and then and, or otherwise if you try to assign it or do some sort of flip or even do a double or we call it you know two closing or double closing it could actually um, mess up the uh, the title the chain of title and only a no title seasoning lender could ever pull that thing off uh, excuse me title company so those things are tricky too um, so it gets real sticky with the new buyer getting a loan. Now, um, shameless plug here, our program, we have some absolutely fantastic ways that we pull this off. But I don't share that on videos or nothing because it is awesome. And uh, it's only for my inner circle of people doing deals. And, and it, it allows you to get these deals done with the new buyers getting a loan. You can still do the wholesale and the seller still doesn't get upset. And uh, it's taken us a long time to dial that in and figure that out. But, um, so sorry for the shameless plug there, but uh, the point is, you've got to be very, very careful if you're going to go about wholesaling houses that you know the end before you get started. Because you can get to the end of the line and cause all kinds of havoc and trouble. Because you didn't structure it right, you didn't lay the foundation right, you didn't do the right judgment call, you didn't have the right team members in place. And all that to say this, wholesaling houses is pretty complicated for a beginner. It's a lot more complicated than just flipping where you just buy a house with a loan, hire a contractor, you know, he takes some of your money, kind of takes advantage of you, you lose a little bit of money there, and then you sell it. That's a lot more standard than a wholesale where you're getting under contract and assigning or flipping it to somebody else. Because that's what I call the creative world. The more creative you, your strange actions are, the more complicated they can be, the more education you need. And the more prepared you need to be for when trouble arises. Because when trouble arises, let's say for example they're upset at the end, it's not that they're just upset you're making money, you've also tied them up for a period of time, three weeks, a month, when they could have sold it to somebody else. You get an emotional and irrational motivated seller, you get them even more mad, that's when they do like I shared earlier in the call and start making crazy threats at you. Alright, so that's what they didn't tell you about old ceiling houses. I, uh, I hope this helps though. If you lay a good foundation and, and then you can make the judgment call, maybe you just take a few extra bucks less um, and you go two closings or you roll the dice. And if you're using, if the new buyer's getting a loan, well, that's an entirely new training, an entirely body of knowledge that I it, obviously I only share with, with, our, with my top students. But, um, anyways. I'm Phil Pustiowski with FreedomMentor.com. I hope you enjoy my videos. If you do, please make comments, ask questions. I definitely interact with those that ask, um, ask questions and comments here on these videos. And uh, also check out my website, grab some more of my trainings, grab my book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor, and uh, hopefully that'll give you some more education and training so you can get out there and make good decisions and be successful out there and also not get yourself in any trouble. All right, thanks so much for watching.